Everybody, it's Tyler here at Vex Rules, checking in 229V Ace Rule Box. Speaking about Ace, number one in true skill, seven triple crowns this year. Phenomenal season, congratulations for that. And I can't wait to dive more into what Ace Rule Box is. Let's take a look at the robot, what they have to offer here so far. Going with the low, uh, low bot, a uh, lot of great things with that drop down intake we'll be talking about, how they get under six inches for that D score, H tier hang, a lot of great stuff to talk about. Let's learn more about Ace coming up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Adam, let's talk about that intake and how you're doing that drop down there to get underneath the six inches. Talk to me more about that iteration design and some of the strategy behind it. Yeah. So we, going into Worlds, we really wanted to have a six inch tall robot so we were able to de-score. And the reasoning behind that was that in a match, we saw that a lot of teams were double zoning more and more throughout the season. So we want to be able to get that D score, those D-scores off because that makes it so that even if we're down points early on a mat, in a match, we're able to recover from that with a good D-score. So to do that, we have these two pistons here with a string on each one that allows us to drop the intake down and then it can be pulled back up. And when it's in that up, uh, when it's up, we're able to intake just like normal. And we have this hopper here. And so with that hopper, we can intake into the into the robot, and it'll hold it there perfectly. And this piece will keep it there. But when we top load and put it through the top of the intake, this hopper will go down, and we're able to uh, do ones very efficiently. We didn't do too much testing with uh, different like hoppers and stuff. We uh, pretty much. Uh, did this and it worked pretty well just with a standoff going across the full length. Uh, we did add these zip ties here to make sure that it holds the tribal a little bit better. Gotcha, that makes sense on there. So let's pass it over, uh, by the way, to Logan. He's going to talk more about uh, some of the other features of your robot. Uh, running, the, Rocking the wings, of course, and then we got to check out this uh, h tier hang that you're running as well. <laughs> of course. Too. So to start off with the wings, they're pretty simple. One piston on each side. We have angled wings here on the bottom. This helps with both of our skills and our in-match autonomouses. So we're able to push over every tri ball that we want to just with this little angled piece right here. We bent that just by heating it up with a torch, and it works out pretty well. We also decided to cut out this little section right here. That way we can remove from corner during our, uh, our match autos, but also in skills, and driver skills specifically, we're able to go against the corner and just sweep the balls out really efficiently. So that's been really good for us all day, and it's worked out pretty well. And then moving on to the hang line up here. So yeah, you can go ahead and deploy it here. So it launches straight up. And this season, especially coming into Worlds, hang is super important, especially high hangs. We're seeing a lot of F to H tiers, and we, we decided to go with an H tier specifically so we can be just above all the other teams. And these guider pieces that we use specifically, we want to make it so that we can line up and hang as quickly and efficiently as possible. Because a lot of high hangs that we've seen, while they do get very high, it's taking some teams 5 to 10 seconds, if not more. So it's, we don't want to waste this time at the end of a match that we could be bowling or descoring or anything else. So we, only, we normally go for hang at like five-ish seconds, and that way we can get it off super efficiently with these little guider pieces, and we can be up to H tier really fast. Yeah, we watched your uh, first match uh, this morning as we were filming, and definitely I can attest to mm -hmm. getting those quick hangs as well. Can you uh, just talk a little bit about the packaging and trying to fit all this within to your uh, low base as well too? Any big challenges you had to go through on that? Yeah, of course. It was, it was very difficult, especially as you can see right here on the side. We have three separate pistons, so trying to fit these all next to each other, being able to fully extend was quite the challenge. A big thing that helped with this is this entire thing was catted out. Actually, every single solenoid you see was put into CAD as well for all the pistons, just to make sure that we have enough room. So that really helped when designing it all. What, uh, what CAD program are you guys designing in? We use in Inventor. You use Inventor? Uh, so something I gotta ask you, though, you know, we are starting to see, I think, a lot of the uh, higher tier teams that we're talking to are starting to go more uh, designing the robots and CAD. What benefit did you find, or maybe what advice do you have the teams who want to try to get into starting to design the robot fully in some sort of CAD software? Okay, yeah, so a big thing that can be really helpful is Going back to whenever we first started with designing, it's, there's a lot of things, especially money-wise, you know, we're a completely private team. So whenever we're designing robots, it can be very difficult to you know, spend all this money on new parts, prototype something out, and then realize it just doesn't fit in the end. So switching to a CAD software, we really, we really recommend Onshape. It's free, completely online. It's really easy to use, that's what we started with. And if you start with just something simple and just put together, even if it's just the drive base and then you build the rest of it, just having some sort of base to start off can be really useful and it can save your resources.
So Jacob, we talked, we saw the hang uh, deploy there, but you're also running a PTO off that as well. Uh, and then after that, we got to talk a little about some of your skills performance as well too. You obviously don't have any sort of a flywheel catapult right now in your robot, but you mm -hmm. have that for skills. But walk me through this PTO first. Yeah, sure. So you see here, we have these 48 tooth gears that are actually beveled with a belt sander right here, and they're on both sides. And we we're able to make our PTO work with one piston. It's hidden under this license plate, but simply, it just shifts these gears to these drive chain wheels and it runs at 450 RPM. And we also adjust the diameter of our wind shear just to maintain the perfect speed and torque just to get that H shear that we need. So you can see here, this is our hang speed, which we're going to demonstrate. So yeah, this would get H shear on the vertical bar once fully flattened out. And, uh, and it's very fast and efficient. And we also deploy the hang with these two pistons here that Logan was talking about earlier. Um, we, again, we needed to uh, fit these tightly together with our other pistons. And uh, it works about like at 50 to 40 PSI usually, so we can have low PSIs and it's still strong enough to deploy the hang super efficiently. And we also store our string inside of this uh, little compartment back here, if I can show you. So right here, there's like a little crevice right here, and we have this piece of polycarbonate, and we're actually able to wrap up our string and just shove in this little uh, compartment so that it could just instantly get the string out instead of unwinding the winch, which is super efficient for deploying. I want to ask you, when we saw that come up and you were able to pull up the robot, uh, I have to this robot seemed pretty light. What weight are you rocking here? We're rocking like 12.5 pounds okay. around. Yeah, and we use like a lot of, uh, we use a lot of uh, un simplistic supports and a lot of aluminum nuts to save weight. So we don't use steel nuts on this robot anywhere, actually. and. Uh, we just made sure to make sure all of our supports are super simplistic and not overdone. And that's part of the reason why we use CAD, just to make sure it's super simplified and super uh, consistent. Let's wrap up and talk about some of your skill runs here um, and the uh, flywheel that you're rocking off of that afterwards. So talk to me about uh, what the device is and where it goes on your robot too. Yeah, sure. So this is our slapper mechanism. Uh, it's just a super simple, like 40 RPM around slapper. And we have this little flex wheel here just so it gets the extra distance it needs gotcha. to make it over. And we actually mount it right about where this license plate sits. So I would just cut off the license plate and just mount it right there and it's ready for skills. And it's just super simple, super consistent. And uh, it only added like a pound to our robot. So we are still able to move fast during skills and be efficient. Oh, and we have to take off the motor off our intake to stay within the motor limit uh, once we add the slapper. Gotcha. Uh, I do want to ask you real quick on using like a squish wheel. Like, uh, what have you found in your testing of going squish wheel for a slapper versus like a, a hard contact piece or something? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we noticed that when we had a hard contact piece, it would actually inconsistently uh, have inconsistent distances going across. And with the squishy wheel, it has more surface area once it hits the, hits the tri ball. So we just hit it with a more consistent surface. Every time it hits it, it just squishes down to be flat and it just makes it overall really good at making it over. Perfect. Well, 229B, congratulations on a phenomenal season so far. I know looking for big things here at Bex World, uh, so we can't wait to see how you do. But thanks for being such a great inspiration to the community. So many teams have drawn off of what your team has done, and I know that's an awesome feeling they have, but you really have done a great job that way. So thanks for telling us more about it, and good luck here at Bex World. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.